This is definitely a facepalm moment. We have the leaked price of the Panasonic GH6, the Panasonic Lumix GH6, which is a feature-packed camera. You can see all the specifications got lined up right here. It's a truly amazing camera, very, very powerful, a significant upgrade over the GH5, but the price looks to be a significant upgrade too. A US store just recently had a price leaked onto their website and they've since taken it back, but that price was, are you ready for this? Um, you might want to sit down if you, and if you're drinking something, I'll give you a second. All right. 2,899 US dollars. Yeah, I know that's pretty, pretty high and I get it. Yes, we have an awful lot of amazing features here. This is a definite huge leap over the GH5 in terms of capabilities. Video wise, it's a very, very powerful camera, but as far as attracting new people into the marketplace, We've already trying to persuade them that don't worry about the autofocus system. We can manual focus with this and the autofocus system is much more improved for those that want autofocus. But then to say, well, we're going to you're going to have to fork out twenty eight ninety nine for the body alone. And then, of course, a lens if you're new to the system. Now, if you're in the system already, you might look at this and go, OK, twenty eight ninety nine. I've got all these lenses. That's a high price, but it's worth it. I'm going to get it. And I get that but it's attracting more people into the market that I think is going to be a challenge here. Think about it, $2,900 essentially. At that price point, I know what I would do. I would start looking at, well, what about Sony and the A7S III? I would start to look at that camera. It's full frame. It's got some really amazing capabilities video-wise. I'd start to look at that as well. I'd start to look at other full frame cameras as well. $2,899, that's really punching well above what you would normally see for a micro four thirds camera. And I'm not sure what to think here. I, part of me is thinking that this is just a placeholder price. We can't, we're not going to really see this price. It's going to be considerably lower. And when we saw the R5 coming out, the A7 IV coming out, we saw prices all over the place in terms of rumors. But usually when a store leaks a price, if it, like this price, $28.99, and we're expecting a price no more than $2,500, it's close enough to be believable. And usually when a store is getting ready, they need to put numbers into the system because you can't just put stuff in inventory in some systems. Some you can, but in a lot of older systems, you need a price in the system. So what do they do? Well, they'll go ahead and put in a ridiculous price like 999999 or 888888. A price that if it was leaked, you'd go, yeah, that looks like a placeholder price. I wouldn't really expect that. But 2899? Let me ask you, what do you think? Do you think that this is a good price for the Panasonic GH6? And let me know what, in your answer, do you currently own a GH series camera? And if you don't own a GH series camera, if you don't own a Panasonic, if this was 2018, or if this, the situation I was in in 2018, I was looking for a new camera and I saw this camera and I saw this price, I wouldn't be as excited as the price of the GH5. This would definitely have me looking at other cameras, and I think at $28.99, unless I needed something compact and lightweight, I'd probably just go into full frame because it's pushing me into that price of full frame. And this is just one of those things. When it comes to buying something that is considerably better, it always has a higher price tag. The way we're primed, at least in North America, is the more expensive something is, generally the more capable it is. And so when you think $28.99, it's very capable, but that's well within the range of full frame. Remember, full frame cameras start at around $899, and that's with the Canon EOS RP on sale. Regular price is $999. And then when you start moving up to $28.99, you're, you're higher than the price of the R6, the A7 IV, and you start get, getting closer to the price of other full frame cameras. I, I, I honestly don't know what to think here. I'm kind of shocked by this. When I woke up this morning, I looked outside. It was beautiful. It was sunny. It's about minus eight. And well, I guess it was about minus nine because that's what it is right now. And I thought, okay, I'll go out, shovel the driveway. Then I'll open up the laptop. I'll take a look at my analytics. And let's just take one quick look at news, not expecting anything, seeing if there's a video I need to get out. And as soon as I saw this on Four Thirds Rumors, I thought, yeah, okay. I need to wake up, I need to go do a video, and here I am right now. And I just, <laughs> yeah, and even Four Thirds Rumors are saying, GH price or GH6 price leaked, question mark? Is this a placeholder? It's close enough to the range that we're expecting for the GH6 to think it's the price. Now, regardless of what comment you've typed in, regardless of what you're thinking, the announcement comes in just a few days.
don't make any decisions at this point. Just relax, take a deep breath, and let's wait and see what happens on the 21st. Now, I have the day off, so I'm thinking of doing a couple of things. Videos, and maybe a live stream as well at the time of launch, or probably after launch, because why would you watch my channel at the time of launch when Lumix is doing the presentation? I wouldn't. So maybe I follow up an hour, an hour after, or an hour or an hour after, an hour or two hours afterwards and do a live show, we can discuss it. But I don't want this to take away from all these specifications here for the GH6. It is beautiful. Um, I, I would, and I'm gonna say this, I still wish they would have a phase detect autofocus system. I really do. And I know I haven't used a GH6 or a GH5, and that maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe that's what's stopping me from falling in love with it truly. But for what I shoot, I do know that an autofocus system works really, really well for me, like these studio pieces. And I know we can use the app that Panasonic gives us or that Lumix gives us, and it helps. But you see, it's another step. And already when I come down here to shoot, I have a huge checklist of things I have to think. I've got to make sure all the lights are on. I've got different lights here and here that are here. These are automatic lights. I've got to make sure the Ninja's set up properly. Cables are plugged in. The laptop is ready. I'm mic'd up. I got to make sure my collar isn't, you know, flipped around. All sorts of different things. And now that I have to open up an app, I got to get the iPad. The iPad's got to be charged or the phone's got to be down here. I got to make sure I silence it so it doesn't ping. It's just another step. And having that autofocus system, it means I turn the camera on, I turn the ninja on, and that stuff is set. I don't have to do anything else as long as it's in its custom mode. I, I get it. At this point, Panasonic is not going to move away from depth from defocus. That's the contrast autofocus system they're going to stick with, and they will continually improve upon it. And in the leaked video review that we saw of this, it did look pretty good, but I'm going to hold my final judgment until the day of. And remember, there are two camps here, the people who need autofocus and those who shoot without it. And there's an awful lot of Panasonic owners that don't shoot with autofocus and that have learned not to shoot with autofocus. And you can do it. It takes more skill. I still shoot manual focus myself whenever I'm doing product reviews. So for example, on these Angel Bird cards, uh, the reflection uh, and even a slight tilt in it when shooting with a 50 millimeter f1.2 with a wide aperture, I have to just dial in that focus almost to a specific millimeter in order to not have it blown out. And I love shooting manual. And I guess that's the difference between a pro and an amateur is you know when to go full on automatic and when to go manual. But speaking of Angelbird, uh, one thing that might help reduce the price of the GH6 for you now that it supports CF Express Type B cards, I am giving away one of these at the end of the month. This is a 512 gigabyte CF Express card. It's Angelbird's AV Pro SE, minimum, sta minimum sustained write speed of 800 megabytes per second. And that's more than enough for any hybrid camera. That can do 8K60, 8K30 on the Nikon Z9, the R5, the R5C. So you're gonna have no problem even doing Apple ProRes at 1.9 gigabits per second on the GH6. The other card is the 160 gigabyte. It's the AV Pro SX. And what this is designed for is when you wanna hold down that shutter button and just shoot high speed stills. It's really not aimed at video. It has a minimum sustained write speed of 1,480 megabytes per second. It's 1.5 gigabits per second, or it's 1.5 gigabytes per second. It's just a huge amount of data. So not really for the GH6. I would go with the AV Pro SE. So if you do happen to win, you I would pick the 512 giga card that's going to give you tons of recording. So how do you enter? Simply subscribe. You don't have to do anything else. Subscribe to this channel. Make sure you have a mailing address somewhere on the planet. As long as you've got a mailing address, I don't care if you're in Antarctica, you're eligible to win, and you do have to be 18 years of age to be able to enter as well. So those three conditions. And then at the end of the month, I will grab all of the subscribers. I basically go into YouTube. It takes me many hours because I have to go one page at a time, and I can only see 50 at a time. Yeah, uh, last time I did this was around 20,000, and it took about two or three hours. I created some Perl scripts to help me with it. And then probably on the 1st or the 2nd of March, I'll do a, an announcement and uh, contact the winner, letting them know that they've won. So again, subscribe to this channel. Not only will you have a chance of entering to win an Angel Bird, I've got three of them. So I'll be doing a contest for March and April as well. And let's wait and see in a couple of days. We're going to see all the information about the Panasonic GH6. Uh, 
wow, that's definitely expensive. So we'll just have to wait and see if that's the actual price or not. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.